It's been a few weeks since the finale of One Division. I knew I wanted to do this review, but I wanted to give myself some time to process the show and all of its aspects before I did. Now that I have had time to think on it, though, I feel I'm ready to deliver my review to all of you. This video will contain spoilers for the whole series of WandaVision, so if you've not seen all the episodes yet, don't watch this video. So, without further ado, here's my review for WandaVision. <laughs> First off, let's talk about the characters. The two title characters, Wanda and Vision, have always been underused in my opinion, both in the comics and the MCU. This show, however, really fleshed out the characters in ways I personally love. Vision is given more things to do than he ever has been in prior MCU outings. His confrontation with White Vision is amazing. Their fight starts in the typical flight lasers fair, but soon goes to both Visions talking about the ship of Theseus. Now, this sort of shift might feel jarring coming from any other character, but because this is Vision, it fits really well with his more calculating mindset. Next, let's move on to Wanda. I loved the way her characterization slowly changed episode by episode, as the world she built slowly crumbled around her. I think, in many respects, she is the primary antagonist of the show. Now, I purposefully use the term antagonist here, not villain. Lots of the bad things that Wanda does here, I see as her doing subconsciously. We saw in episode 8 that the Hex was created when Wanda's grief reached a, cres a crescendo and her powers exploded. Now, that is not to say that on some level she knew what she was doing and it's bad. Because the answer to both of those statements is yes, she probably did know. And yes, what she did was bad. But I'm sure on certain levels as well. It was a subconscious thing. We see that she still knows she can manipulate the world around her. And we will dive deeper into this when I give my thoughts on each episode individually. But now let's move on to Billy and Tommy. I really liked the way that they were portrayed. They didn't get a whole lot to do in these episodes though. So I don't really have much to say about them. But I am very excited to see where they go in the future of the MCU. Because judging by the second post credit scene at the end of episode 9, we have not seen the last of these two characters yet. And with their future, or not their future, with their um, appearances in the Young Avengers in the comics, and Marvel really hinting at the Young Avengers coming soon, we haven't seen the last of these characters. There is no way. Next, let's discuss Monica Rambeau. I really liked the way she was portrayed in these episodes. Her intro in episode 4 was haunting, showing what happens when everyone is brought back from the blip. I love being able to see this sort of thing. I'm excited to see where she goes in the future of the MCU. I'm going to clump Jimmy, Darcy, and Hayward into one big category here. It was great being able to see Jimmy and Darcy again. We have not seen them since Ant-Man and the Wasp and Thor The Dark World respectively. They both, they both serve as a fun relief from the never-ending heartbreak that is the last few episodes. They help show us what is really going on with the Hex and shed light on this gloriously strange show. Hayward is the perfect villain. From the moment we see him, we immediately begin to hate him. The writing for his character was amazing. Next, we have Agnes, or should I say, Agatha. I felt like she was a better villain when we were in the earlier episodes. I liked it better when she was functioning as the unseen evil. We didn't know what her motivations were how she did what she was doing, or even if it was her at all. When she brought out her full, her full Agatha Harkness persona, she seemed fairly one-dimensional to me. Now, the only character we need to discuss now is Pietro, or as we find out later, Ralph. I actually really liked that twist. It was the first meta twist I have ever seen. Let me explain what I mean in a plot context. No one truly knows if it's Pietro. They just sort of run with it. The writers on WandaVision made this twist even better when you see who they cast. They cast Evan Peters, the Pietro of the Fox X-Men films. They used the fans' knowledge of the X-Men films against us. They made the twist even better because we were just 
as shocked and confused as Wanda was. Many people were upset that Pietro turned out to be Ralph, but personally, I thought this was genius. But now, let's move on to my opinions on every episode individually. First, we have episode one. This, this was our introduction to the show, and it was most certainly an interesting one. This episode was solely a sitcom. There was no hint that it was connected to anything in the MCU other than the characters Wanda and Vision. This was amazing. It kept us confused and intrigued. Even taking away the MCU connection, it was just a great sitcom episode. This is the reason, however, episode 1 and 2 were released together. Now, let's jump in to episode 2. This episode dialed up the weirdness and really showed us what we were all in for with this wild Marvel, Marvel ride. This episode had some of the best humor the show had as well. The magic show with Wanda and Vision was hilarious from start to finish. This is also the episode where Wanda becomes magically pregnant. I loved how strange and fun in equal measure this episode was. Episode 3 is the most overly comedic episode of the show and might be my favorite of all the episodes. However, the, f the finale is also great, but we'll get to that when we get to it. This is the episode where Wanda gives birth to the twins Billy and Tommy. Vision begins to see the strange happenings in Westview and starts questioning what is going on. I really like this episode. Episode 4 served as the exposition and explanation episode, but did this in an entertaining and intriguing way. This is also where we get to see Jimmy and Darcy again. I really liked getting to see all the explanations of some of the strange things we saw and it had seen in past in the past three episodes. Episode five and when thing is when things really start escalating. Billy and Tommy magically age up to ten years old, and Vision learns more about the hex. In an utterly heartbreaking scene, Vision confronts Wanda about what she is doing with the hex. Then the doorbell rings, and who we think is Pietro at the time shows up. I like this episode as well, like I do with most of them. But to me. This was one of the weaker of the episodes. This is not me saying it's bad by any means, but when you compare it to the some of the best TV episodes of the, of the last few years, there's a high bar to reach, and I don't really feel that it met the bar set by all the other episodes. Next up, episode 6. This was a really fun episode to watch. I loved seeing Wanda, Vision, and Pietro in their comic accurate costumes. Vision takes his own solo adventure, and finds more of the strange happenings in Westview. We got to see Billy and Tommy's powers for the first time as well, which was really fun. Vision goes outside of the border and begins to crumble, foreshadowing things we will discover in the next three episodes. Wanda extends the hex walls to save him. This episode was very fun and also gave us subtle hints for the future. Episode 7 serves as the last sitcom episode, traveling into the more usual MCU fare in the next two. This is when... We are introduced to Agnes as Agatha, and Vision goes on a fun adventure with Darcy. Other than that, not much happens in this episode. I still really enjoyed it, but there was not much going on. Episode 8 shows us a full overview of Wanda's past, and it is so heartbreaking. This is the first episode that made me actually cry, like, a lot. There are so many times when I teared up in this episode. I love this episode. Sure, it served as giving exposition in many respects, but it executed it perfectly. Now, let's move on to the elephant in the room, the finale, episode 9. I absolutely love this finale. It was epic in its fight scenes and an emotional gut punch in equal measure. Remember how I said episode 8 made me cry? Yeah, well the last minutes of this episode made me cry like 20 times more. This, to me, was the best way to end a show like this. It is very rare where we had a story where the hero does not win. This is one of those stories. Wanda loses all she loves again. It is so heartbreaking and also leaves the door open for many stories in the future. Overall, I really enjoyed WandaVision. It is one of my favorite things Marvel has done. And I look forward to seeing what else the Juggernaut can do in the future with Disney+. Plus. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked the video... Then be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel to see more content by me. And if you want to see even more content by me, then be sure to follow me on my Instagram page, which is at Ninja Family Entertainment. Thank you all so much for watching, and have a great day. Bye, guys.